Hello, welcome everyone. Thank you for tuning in to this video. This is going to be about the Son of God in the Old Testament. Why am I doing a video on this? Because some people who have not really read their Bibles don't even believe that Jesus claimed to be the Son of God in the New Testament. And so we're going to be, I think I'm going to do two more videos, one about the Son of God in the New Testament, and the other about the Son of God in the Quran. That's going to be kind of interesting, not to put the Quran on the same level as God's Word, which is the Bible. But, uh, believe it or not, there is the Son of God mentioned in the Old Testament. So this is not something new. This is something that the Jews knew. This is something that Jesus knew and referred to himself by. He is the Son of God. So let's just go through this. There's just a couple um, verses that we're going to cover. The first one here is Proverbs 30, verse 4. Who hath ascended up into heaven, or descended? Who hath gathered the winds in his fists? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? I think we could all agree that is God. His proper name being Yehovah in the Bible. And what is his son's name? If thou canst tell. So right here, Proverbs 34 says God has a son. Now, Interesting to note that all of these attributes are attributes that are actually given to Jesus in the Bible. And that's probably going to be another video like Jesus and Deity, something like that. Uh, but for now I just want to show you who hath ascended up into heaven or descended. Very interesting idea, very interesting question. <clears throat> if we go to John chapter 3. Here we go. Here we go. John chapter 3. Sorry if the internet's a little slow. It's coming. Still coming. Here we go. John chapter 3. And we go down, I believe, to verse 13. This is Jesus talking. Awesome chapter, by the way. I highly recommend that you go and read John chapter 3. That's where we get the famous John 3.16. Uh, most people don't actually go all the way to verse 21, but they should. And uh, particularly read the first part, Jesus explaining that you need the Holy Spirit in order to even see the kingdom of God. But verse 13... He says, And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. So what did we read in Proverbs 34? Who hath ascended up to heaven, or come down? We agreed that's God. Here Jesus is saying, No man has ascended up to heaven, or come down from heaven except for the Son of Man. Now, for those of you not familiar with the phrase, the Son of Man, that's actually a divine title. Go back to Daniel 7, verses 13 to 14, and see who the Son of Man is. That's actually one of Jesus' favorite titles for himself, is the Son of Man. He also called himself the Son of God. He also used titles and attributes of God for himself. But here it is. Son of Man, which is in heaven. Jesus also claimed that he was simultaneously in heaven. So that's just a side note, going back to something that Proverbs 34 said. Let's go to our next major chapter, and that is Psalms chapter 2. I'm actually going to read the whole thing because it's only 12 verses. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord, that's Yehovah, and against his anointed, that is in reference to the Messiah, saying, 
Let us break their bands asunder. Notice their bands. Whose bands? The Lord's and the Messiah's. And cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord, that's Adonai, shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath, and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Ooh, Zion, oh! <laughs> Sorry, just had to do that. Uh, Zion is awesome. Anyways, verse 7. I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. So now not only do we have the Son of God, but we have the begotten Son of God. Which is exactly what the New Testament says. So the Lord, Jehovah, continues talking to the Son. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. And, oh, we went a little too far. Laggy computer. Let's go back up. Here, Rebecca. Yeah, yeah. Ah, there we go. Okay. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. He's talking to the Son, giving him the whole earth. By the way, go back to Daniel 7, talk about the Son of Man. Same thing. He's given all, and he's giving an everlasting kingdom. And everyone, all nations, come and they serve him, this Son of Man. So this Son of God receives the heathen and the uttermost parts of the earth. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. That's another messianic prophecy that I don't have time to go into at the moment. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. So this Son of God is going to be doing vengeance. He's going to be doing judgment on these nations, on these kings. <clears throat> be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, his wrath. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. That's the Son of God. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Psalm 2.12 Kiss the Son, lest he be angry and ye perish from the way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. That is the Son of God, in the Old Testament. Now we could go into how Jesus is actually God as well, and his roles and being judge and putting out his wrath on the earth, book of Revelation and things like that. But for now I just want you to put this to put this to heart, think about it. The Son of God is mentioned in the Old Testament by the prophets. Proverbs thirty four, Psalms Chapter 2. Just think about that. Okay? It's not something Christianity made up. It's not something that was new in Jesus' time. The Jews knew it. Jesus knew it. There it is. Alright. See you guys for the next video. God bless.